Mm. Good afternoon, everyone. Very excited to report on a recent trip I took with my father to Cuba. We had not been there for three years. In fact, it was the very same festival we attended end of February 2020, the last time we visited. We went back again. It's the Havana Habanos Festival. It celebrates all things Cuban cigar. It was an opportunity to revisit a glorious island, to capture and bottle, perhaps, if we can, the spirit that makes Cuban cigars wonderful, that makes Cuban rum exceptional, and of course, the most important ingredient, the Cuban people. Well, I'm very pleased to report the condition of the cigars and the condition of the supplies are improving. This has been a significant worry for many of us. All of us in the industry hope and wish and pray that Cuba is able to produce as many cigars as they can. And of course, as an end consumer, you are able to purchase any that you may like. The situation was not great between COVID, hurricanes, and some of the other problems Cuba's faced. However, they are getting there. We saw some wonderful, wonderful leaves growing. The factories are working at full tilt. And I will run you through some of the new releases that have been announced whilst we were there. I'd like to begin with the first one, in chronological order at least. We arrived on a Sunday, and of course Monday evening was the launch of a new Monte Cristo open cigar. This was the little packaging it came with. It will ultimately be, I believe, in boxes of 20. And it's called the Monte Cristo Open Slam. Why is it called the Slam? If I'm not mistaken, it's a reference to the tennis world. As some of you may know, the Open Series from Monte Cristo is intended to celebrate sport, and in particular, golf. But the Slam takes a sideways trip into the world of tennis. Now, this is quite a big cigar. 52 ring gauge by 142 millimeters. Please forgive my pronunciation, but I think the factory name for this is an Idilicos. And the version we smoked in Cuba was an early preview. So, of course, a very young cigar. By the time we see it in the regular market, I suspect it will be one or two years down the road. And by then, I suspect it will also have matured correctly for the palates of the discriminating smoker. So here we have it, a little exciting addition to the current production line of the Monte Cristo Open. Next one we saw was this little beauty, which has previously been launched already, but we haven't seen it in the UK market yet. It's called the Monte Cristo Wide Edmundo. It joins the standard line of Monte Cristo. The size is a 54 by 125 millimeter, recently beefy, reasonably beefy, I should say, not too long. And the factory name is a Duke number no. three. I would estimate meh, about a 40, 45 minute smoke. I haven't yet smoked this, and I'm waiting six to nine months before I try this very cigar, because I always think a little bit of settling is appropriate. Smelling very good though. Now, I think the most exciting part of the whole festival was on the last day, what we call the gala, the big dinner where there's an auction, everyone dresses up, there's beautiful presentation of music and culture from Cuba. And of course, the highlight of the evening is the release of a very important cigar. This year, it's called the Linea Maestra from Partagas. The reason we're very interested and excited in, in the industry is because it brings back a shape. And the shape is called the 109 head. This is not a new variant. In fact, it's quite an old shape. 
The Partagas Lusitania, many decades ago, used to be made with a 109 head. And in more recent years, some astounding regional editions across various brands have been in what's called the 109 shape, which is quite a long cigar, normally a Prominente's length, but a 109 head. Let's take a look. This special packaging is specific to the event, so they will not be available in this packaging normally. But look at that. You can see three distinct sizes here. And I'm just going to run you through what they are. In the middle here, you have the origen, or origen, maybe. Please forgive my pronunciation. This is a slimmest 46 ring gauge by 154 millimeter length. It's called a bondadosos. Terrible pronunciation again. Very, very lovely cigar. Um, the blend is, of course, classically partagas. So we will expect it to be medium to full bodied. Some pepper coming through. Um, the version we smoked, again, far too young to make a judgment call. And I think we will see the advantage of time working on the blend here. Expect to see that perhaps in 18 months to, to two years even in the markets. I may be wrong, it may come sooner. Next size I'd like to draw your attention to is the Rito. This is a 52 by 168 ring gauge. Technically, it's a gustosos. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I suspect it's something to do with taste. Again, beautiful shape, again with a 109 head. Last but not least is the Maestro. This is quite a beefy cigar, 56 ring gauge, 132 millimeter in length. And again, forgive my pronunciation, I think it's a delightes or deleites maybe. I'm suspecting it means delightful. I could be completely wrong on that. Um, three wonderful editions. And you may ask, do Partagas need another line within their portfolio? And what space does it occupy in the Partagas um, hierarchy. Well, this goes right to the top. The Linea de Maestra is intended to compare to the 1935 series from Monte Cristo, the Bahique from Cohiba, or indeed the Linea de Oro from Romeo and Juliet. It's con considered to be the top of the brand pyramid and will therefore have the most superlative tobacco and perhaps the greatest attention to the packaging and certainly the aging of the tobaccos. We will wait to see this in the market. We are extremely excited and very grateful to Cuba for continuously delighting us with new additions. I was also very pleasantly surprised to find a new Gloria Cubana. For those of you who aren't familiar with the brand, this sits beneath the main brands of Cuba. Uh, it's considered a, a regional variation, often you will find regional editions extolling and demonstrating the blending that is La Gloria Cubana. There are very few actual cigars in the standard current production range of Gloria Cubana that you can buy here in the UK, certainly, and perhaps globally. This one is called the Turquinos. I'm guessing it means the turkeys. <laughs> I hope not, but it could mean something else. It could be a color. Very, very new production. And these particular ones are gorditos. And for those of you who don't know what a gordito is, it's essentially a robusta ring gauge, so 50 ring gauge, but longer. In this case, it's 141 millimeters. The aroma on these is beautiful. Again, I have not smoked it yet. I think it'll need a little bit of settling time. But when I do, I will be reporting on the flavor profile. And of course, delighted to have a new Gloria Cubana, I hope will be available here in the UK market. However, that was not all. We were very fortunate to be invited by Phoenicia. For those of you who don't know, Phoenicia is the distributor for Lebanon, the Middle East, and some of the surrounding markets. It's a huge, huge importer of Cuban cigars. It's been around 40 plus years. They make exceptional regional editions. 
For those of you who've never had the opportunity to try the Phoenicias, typically in the Ramon Iones blends, strongly recommend you find a, a good friend who might have one and, and try it. They're wonderful. Well, they had a launch party. I know these have already come out, but they're out now officially. And it's the Juan Lopez Adon. It's a classic Montesco. And that means like the White Churchill from Romeo and Julieta. It's a 55 ring gauge, approximately 130 mil on length. And I did smoke this. And I have to say, it was glorious. For me, on the lighter end of the Juan Lopez spectrum, so light medium going towards medium, um, the quality was beautiful. It paired beautifully with the rum we were enjoying on the evening. And this cannot just be that I was Havana drunk, meaning everything I enjoyed in Havana was even better. I think this is an exceptional cigar. I'm sad to report it's a regional edition for Lebanon only, so we will not get it here in the UK. But for those of you lucky enough to be traveling there, perhaps with friends who are traveling there, I would very much recommend you purchase some. I do believe there's going to be about 10,000 boxes made, um, and I think they're boxes of 20, so there should be enough for a while. There was one more cigar that was launched midweek, which unfortunately I did not attend the, the launch party for. It's a new Bolivar gold medal. Those of you who don't know the Bolivar gold medals, it's a glorious cigar, normally in a slimmer format. I believe a 42 ring gauge. Quite long, like a sort of Lonsdale size. And it would have typically a sleeve of gold in, in wrapping or encasing some of the cigar. This is going to be the same concept, but it's going to be in a thicker cigar. I believe it's a 48 ring gauge by 165 mil. I believe the factory name is going to be a Partagas 15. What that tells us, I'm not sure. But the reports back from any who smoked it was that it was delightful. And again, we'll need a little bit of time before it's ready to properly appreciate its blend. In general, we caught up with many of our trade friends internationally, from Asia, from the Middle East, uh, and from the Caribbean regions. And it was wonderful to chit chat and understand whether the same things we are seeing here in the UK market are happening globally. It would appear they are. The broad themes are there is a lot of demand for good cigars. That's been incubated and developed through COVID. There is a whole new generation of enthusiastic, involved cigar smokers. And they are interested in the brand stories, in the experience the brand has to offer, it's not purely the cigar itself, but it's also the wider universe of the cigars. The other theme that's come out is, of course, the supply shortages that we've all experienced in the last few years from Cuba seem to be improving a little bit. Not enough, but a little bit. And that is encouraging because I think Cuba should do everything they can, and I know they are, to be delivering the wonderful cigars into the world market. And of course, the consumer rightly wants to enjoy all great cigars from all origins. And it's extremely unfair, perhaps frustrating, not to be able to enjoy all the wonderful Cuban cigars that are out there as well. Cuba itself is a wondrous place. It's a little time capsule. Uh, as a visitor there, I'm very self-conscious that the privileges we enjoy, the material privileges we enjoy outside of Cuba are a jarring contrast to some of the shortages and difficulties that Cuba faces. However, the people are Cuba's greatest treasure. They are resolute. They are accommodating. They're kind and generous wonderful hosts, talented, educated, forward-thinking optimists. They will make the best of every little thing they have. And to see that restores my faith in humanity. It makes me humbled and appreciative of some of the material luxuries we enjoy 
in our world here in the UK and, and broader. But it also reminds me that sometimes life can be overly complicated, unnecessarily full of trinkets and material desires. Cuba could always do with more, but the amazing things they do with the little they have should be a lesson for all of us. And it's refreshed my faith in humanity to see everything they're able to do there. So this is me signing off from my resume of my trip in Cuba. And I shall follow up in no doubt, short order, with my thoughts on some of these cigars once I've enjoyed them. Thank you for your time.